In this video, we're going to look at isomers in organic compounds as well as the difference between aromatic and aliphatic compounds. So first of all, our isomers. In a geometric isomer, the structural and molecular formulas of the two compounds are the same. In a structural isomer, only the molecular formulas are the same. The structural, structural formulas are going to be different. So let's take a look and see what we mean by different structural molecular formulas. So for our two compounds, we have two compounds, one on the left and one on the right. Uh, let's take a look and actually make our structural molecular formulas. So first of all, the molecular formulas, um, which I'm going to make in green. So for this one, I have two carbons, two hydrogens, and two chlorines. Over on my molecule on the right, I have two carbons, two hydrogens, and two chlorines. So my molecular formulas are exactly the same. My structural formulas, I actually have to go through and write, starting with the carbons, and then I need to write the elements that are attached to each of those carbons. So I'll start in my left molecule with my left carbon. So my first carbon, this carbon right here, I have attached a chlorine and a hydrogen. Then on my second carbon, I have attached a chlorine and a hydrogen. Over here on my right molecule, I have on my left carbon, I have a chlorine and a hydrogen. And over here on my right carbon, I have a chlorine and a hydrogen. So when I take a look at my two molecular formulas, I notice that, that they are identical. And when I look at my structural formulas, they are also identical. So I know that these two compounds are geometric isomers. All I did was take the hydrogen and chlorine attached to my to my right hand carbon and rotate them. I just rotated the carbon around. I switched the geometry of the molecule. In order to make this compound look like this compound, I didn't have to break any bonds. My carbons maintained their attachments, their bonds to the same elements. So each of my carbons stayed bonded to one hydrogen and one chlorine. I just twisted the carbon to change the arrangement of that chlorine and hydrogen. So now let's take a look at these two molecules. So as before, I'm going to start with my molecular formulas. So for the one on my left, it is C2H2Cl2. And over on my right, c 2 h 2 Cl2. Now for my structural formulas, over here I have CH2 CCl2 because my carbon on the left is attached to two hydrogens and my carbon on the right is attached to two chlorines. Then over here my structural formula for this compound is CClH and CClH. And as you notice, your structural formulas for each of these compounds are different, while the molecular formulas remain the same. In order to make my left compound look like my right compound, I actually had to break bonds. Over here on my left, my left carbon was bonded to two hydrogens. Over on my right, my left carbon is bonded to a chlorine and a hydrogen, so I had to break the bond of this hydrogen and replace it with the chlorine that I broke the bond over from on this carbon. I broke this bond from this chlorine and took that chlorine and put it over, took this chlorine, attached it to this carbon, took this hydrogen and attached it to this carbon. And the only way to accomplish that is by actually breaking bonds. There's no way that I can shift or twist or flip the geometry of this compound to make it match this compound. 
which is why both of these we refer to as structural isomers. The next thing we're going to look at briefly are aromatic and aliphatic. So let's actually start with the aliphatic. What aliphatic means is just a straight chain of carbons. So if I have a pentane molecule, and all these dashes represent hydrogens bonded to my carbon, this pentane molecule would be an aliphatic compound. An aromatic compound, on the other hand, contains carbon rings with alternating double bonds. The simplest aromatic is called benzene. So benzene actually looks like this. So we have a ring of carbons with hydrogens attached. So this is benzene. However, the thing to keep in mind with aromatics, oops, and one other thing to add is our alternating double bonds. So that's benzene, a carbon ring with alternating double bonds and hydrogens filling up all of the leftover bonds that carbon has, because remember carbon can form four bonds. So the thing to remember with aromatics is that if I remove one of these hydrogens and add a functional group, which we're going to talk about functional groups in the next video. So let's say I add the functional group OH, which we know is alcohol. This becomes phenyl alcohol. So when an aromatic ring is acting as a functional group, it takes on the prefix or the it becomes the prefix phenol, which means it's, in this case, it's a benzene that's missing an H because that H has been replaced by the functional group alcohol. If I removed the alcohol and substitute it with chlorine, for example, then it would become phenyl halide because I've replaced the H from benzene and created with a, with a halogen, so I've created a halide, an alkyl halide functional group. So phenyl, meaning that I have an aromatic functional group, and halide, meaning I have an alkyl halide functional group. The other thing that I want to point out with this, or about this ring, is that we can consider this unsaturated. Unsaturated means that it doesn't have the maximum number of hydrogens that it can have. So let's take a look at something that is saturated. So here we have a propane molecule, which means it has three carbons and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. This molecule is saturated, meaning it has the maximum number, number of hydrogens that it can hold with three carbons. The only way to add more hydrogens is to add more carbons. If I were to remove one of these bonds and create propene, now it's unsaturated because I'm only able to get one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens attached to this three carbon chain. It doesn't, it's not holding the maximum number of hydrogens that three carbons can hold, which as we saw in the last example in the propane was eight. So just some miscellaneous things to remember and keep in mind for your test tomorrow.